All right, we got the Bouge RV 40 amp solar charge controller. We're gonna be testing this thing out, going over some of the specs and seeing if this thing can actually put out what it claims. And we're gonna go ahead and do that in this video. And remember everything I use in this video, I'll go ahead and leave it linked up in the description because people always ask, you know, what stuff is. So one of the most important things people are gonna want to know is what's the price on this unit? The 40 amp, they got a 30 amp, a 40 amp, and a 60 amp of these MPP uh, Bouge RV uh, charge controllers. I'm testing out the 40 amp, of course, and it's $139, uh, at least initially, and the price is gonna go up. But I do have a discount code for 15% off, and it's gonna be good for a week from the release date of this video. And that's good for all the Sunflower charge controllers, the 30 amp, the 40 amp, and the 60 amp. So if you're interested in that, hey, go ahead and hit up that link below. So the solar charge controller is the MPPT, uh, so it's uh, maximum, uh, the PowerPoint tracking. So it's gonna be able to track, it's got 99% efficiency. So, you know, if you have clouds and stuff coming through and then the sun comes right back, it's gonna be as efficient as possible. And let's go ahead and say you have a lithium battery and you wanna protect it from a low temperature uh, situation. This does come with a little temperature probe. You can basically plug it into the unit and put it wherever your battery's at. And if the temperature is too low, this will automatically stop the charge into that battery. Let's say you have a lithium battery that doesn't have the low temperature protection already built into it, which quite a few of them don't, some of them do. I'm gonna be testing some of those out here soon. Bam, you got it right here. I like that that's a built-in feature. And I guess, you know, this is also gonna work for like if you have a lead acid battery or something that you don't wanna do when it's freezing cold, bam, you can use that as well. So we're gonna go over some of the specs. This thing will do 12 volt and 24 volt batteries. So you'll be able to charge, you know, your 12 volt system, if you've got a smaller system or a smaller 24 volt system, this will do 600 watts at 12 volts and 1200 watts at 24 volts. So not bad at all, especially for a smaller system. I'm gonna be using this for a future project. That's why I have this thing. So I'm gonna do a review on it, you know, independently by itself. And then we're gonna put it in a project, a little build I'm gonna do. I have a couple little builds I'm gonna do. Basically, I want to do something so I can keep my, uh, build a dog house and maybe have a heated floor in it and run that thing completely off solar and batteries in the winter to help keep my dog warm. My dog, I have an outside dog. And then I have my chickens. I want to be able to try to uh, keep them a little, a little bit of heat inside my chicken coop at night. So I'm gonna have a, t a separate system for that as well. So I'm gonna be using this on one of those. I have a couple of different things I'm gonna be testing out and trying out. So basically I have some solar, charge controllers, some batteries, and inverter to run the system. But we're gonna make sure this thing works first before I ever do any of that. I'm gonna test everything independently. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So basically we got a couple of solar panels. I'm gonna take two 305 watt uh, solar panels and I'm gonna go ahead and hook those up. That's just a little bit over the rating for this, but we are gonna be within the 100 volt uh, maximum. So this is gonna work up to 100 volts. And basically we're gonna take those two 305 watt solar panels, put them in series, so your amperage is gonna be the same, but the voltage is gonna go up. And let's go ahead and hook that up and see what we got. And as you see, as we're measuring it right here, we have about 72 volts. So that's gonna work out great because it's gonna be less than 100 volts. And we're gonna go ahead and get this thing hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up to the solar charge controller to make sure everything's working. The, sol the, ch the solar charge controller is coming on. And we do have this little screen on here and I'm about to make some changes. Because as you can see, it's not on lithium battery, and I do have it hooked up to a, a little lithium battery right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the app and get all that stuff changed. We'll see how fast the app can get pulled up. All right, so basically I downloaded the app, and we're going to see how fast this thing connects the first time to this charge controller. Because some things, when you get an app for something, the, the stuff just doesn't work. It's complicated to get it hooked up, and hopefully this time it's not. So let's go ahead and see what we got. And bam, as you can see, the app is up. And bam, I went to add it now. It's already on there, press okay. It's connected to the device. Bam, it's already connected that fast. So this thing was super easy to get it connected. And as you can see right now, had about 380 watts coming in, it's moving around due to the clouds outside. And you can see all the data that you're gonna have. It's in MPP charge mode, of course. The uh, voltage coming in is 63, of course, with a load. It was 73 without a load. And we're just gonna see what kind of basic information this thing, this app has. You can go in here and change the parameters and the settings. It's on lead acid. We're gonna go ahead and change that to lithium and bam. And I got the system voltage in auto. So if it's a 12 or 24 volt, it's gonna go ahead and recognize that, be able to set all the voltage and bam. 
and now we got the current uh coming up on it it's up to six amps 340 watts and that's coming up and you see the voltage coming in is at 55 right now and that's all just based on the cloud cover and it is and it's after four o'clock in the afternoon as you can see on this app so you know we're not going to have the, the best thing coming in right now that we could possibly have i have the two solar panels leaning against the side of the house so they are kind of facing the sun a little bit, but still it's not the middle of the day. So it's not gonna be a uh, prime what we're bringing in. And as you can see right there, that's what, how our little setup looks. It's got the battery, got the charge controller and got the solar panels. And we're gonna go ahead and show you right now what we got coming in. As you look at, you see, we got some cloud cover. So it's not a bright sunny day. The sun may break through here and there, but we're gonna see what the maximum watts we can bring in this afternoon. All right, we just got this one started. And as you can see at 412, now we're bringing in about 540 watts and we're gonna see, you know, how high we can get this thing to come up to, you know, if the sun breaks through a little bit, but 530 watts out of basically a 610 watt uh, solar array is pretty good late in the evening and with all the cloud cover that we currently have. As you see, it's dropping just based on the cloud cover. All right, and that 415 here, as you can see what we got coming in, the wattage is 574 watts, 572 watts. And then bam, it dropped down just based on the cloud cover. So as you can see, the maximum we were able to bring in late in the evening was 575 watts on the 610 watt uh, solar array. So that's definitely good, in my opinion, not even middle of the day in the evening, cloud cover coming through, you know, hazy skies. And this MPPT charge controller was able to bring in 94% efficiency. So this thing is 94% efficient when it wasn't even completely sunny outside. You know, plenty of cloud cover and haze. As you can see right there, you know, total hazy skies, cloudy conditions, you know, partially cloudy. So to me, this thing did pretty good on its first test and I'm definitely gonna use this thing on my project. Definitely not gonna have a problem with it. So let's go ahead and show you a few things on this. Now we're gonna test out if this temperature sensor actually works. We'll get us a cup of ice water. And as this thing is charging, we'll dip this in there and see if it cuts out the charge into the battery. Right now it's showing 416 watts. Let's stick it in there. Get it down in the water. And bam, it kicked out. So it actually worked. As you can see, pulling zero watt. So this does work. And I went on ahead and pulled it out. Leave it out in the sun for a second. And see how long it takes to kick back on. Still at zero watts. Got it sitting out here, drying off and heating up in the sun. I'm guessing it's about in the 60s or maybe 70 today. I don't know. It's not that hot. So let's see what this thing does. See how long it takes to kick back on. And all that might be based on my settings as well. So maybe check it look at all the settings for my charger. Let's see. I don't know if it has a a setting for when it kicks back on. I don't think so. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it back. But at least we know this probe works and it does kick out. And you can set it to different settings, not, not just zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, but anywhere it seems like you want to set it. So you want to set it to 40, you can do that. Degrees Fahrenheit. And bam, it warmed back up enough. It's actually kicked back on, pulling 391 watts. So this little built-in uh, temperature sensor probe does work. And you can use this charge controller with any kind of battery. Uh, lithium and it's going to kick it out and it's not going to charge it when it's too cold so it's going to protect your battery so like we already talked about the bluetooth the built-in bluetooth was pretty amazing i just clicked on the app after i downloaded it and the thing and it, it installed quick it picked this thing up i clicked okay bam it was showing me the data within a few seconds so no setup time, no, you didn't have to make no account or nothing crazy like that. Like a lot of apps, they want all your information so they can try to sell it to somebody else and make more money. So basically what we got on this, you know, of course this thing has a built-in display, has select and an enter button, and then your connections down here, you know, you're gonna have your uh, RS-485, 
You got your connection for your temperature. I think this is another communication sensor. I'm gonna have to look that one up, see exactly what that one is. Basically, you take this little cover off here, and then you have all your connections on here. You got your battery, um, battery negative, your battery positive, your load. So you have a load on here too, which I never use these uh, loads on the solar uh, charge controller because usually I always have an inverter hooked up. So that's where I'm gonna be getting my power from. But you can get power off of there and uh, use that, I think up to 20 amps. You know, I think it's like, you know, a 12 volt circuit or whatever. Then you got your, uh, you have solar, PV input, positive and negative. So you can make all your connections easily. You know, it's a screw terminal connections on the top, as you can see. You just slip this little cover back in, it just slides right in. As you see, it's not gonna fall out or anything. It's a pretty tight connection, but you can pop it right out. You don't have to screw it down or anything. Comes a little manual and it's pretty good. It has all the specs and everything in it. So let's look at this. Okay, this TTL is just another communication. You know, I guess for if you want to have it hooked to certain inverters or certain batteries, just a different communication type. And on the Bluetooth for this device, it can save the data for up to 200 days. So that built-in Bluetooth communication, it has a history on it. So let's go ahead and show you that. And basically you can look at this stuff for 200 days to see how much power you, you brought in for today. You know, you can use this display on here to make adjustments and all that. But I mean, I would have to use the manual because you try to click on here and start going through stuff. It's a lot harder than if I just get my phone and use the app. As you can see, it was pretty easy to use it with the app. So I'd highly recommend using the app to make any changes to this because it's, it's going to be a lot harder with a two button uh, select an inner system because you're going to have to be trying to go through all the menus and everything on the little screen. It's a lot more aggravating than just being able to use the app. And of course, on the bottom of this device, let's see if you can actually see it. It has cooling fins and the device never got hot whenever I was using it to charge. So that worked out pretty good. You know, it's a pretty heavyweight uh, charge controller. Let's see if they have the weight listed on it because, you know, this isn't a, like a light plastic junk unit. You know, this seems like it's quality stuff, you know, pretty heavy duty. And like we said, it's a pretty heavy duty unit and it's 3.94 pounds. It only says grams. So I basically just converted it from the manual, but it's pretty heavy weight compared to some of the other uh, charge controls I have that are plastic, you know, junk ones, and they're not that good. So what can you do with a system like this? You can run something smaller. So if you're running a couple of 12 volt batteries, maybe a hundred amp hour, you know, it should be able to charge those back no problem because you should be able to pull in 3,000 watts a day or 3KW. So if you're running something that's using a little bit during the day and then you need to charge back a couple of a KW into batteries, this should do it. So to me, that's what this is for is a smaller system. You know, if you want to have like some backup for your house, you know, run a few things, run a light, a refrigerator, something like that, it can do that. Because if you got a system big enough to run your refrigerator during the day, it's going to stay cold at night, even if you don't run it. So that's what we're going to be doing in the upcoming videos using this on those projects. Like I said, hey, if you have any questions about this or comments, hey, let me know down in the comments below and I can try to answer them for you or do some more testing if you're interested in that. So, hey, if you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And thanks for watching.